Welcome back. In this video, you will learn about the ratio test for series. Let's get to it. All right, so the ratio test is another test that we can use to determine the convergence or divergence of a series. Specifically, the ratio test will be able to tell us if a series converges absolutely. And so here's how the ratio test works. For an infinite series, where we have the sum of a sequence a sub n, if the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of the ratio between these two terms, a sub n plus one and a sub n, is equal to some limit L that is less than one, then we can conclude that our series converges absolutely. All right, and then if the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of that ratio is equal to some limit greater than one or it's equal to infinity, then we can conclude that the series diverges. And then finally, if that limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of that ratio is equal to one, then we cannot conclude that our series converges or diverges, the test is inconclusive, and we will need to use another test to determine the convergence or divergence of that series. All right, and so the general process that we're going to use for the ratio test to determine the convergence or divergence of a series is we will first look at the two terms a sub n and a sub n plus one and take the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of the ratio of those two terms. And depending on the result of that limit, we will be able to conclude that the series converges absolutely, it diverges, or maybe no conclusion at all, and we'll have to use another test. All right, and you will find that the ratio test is particularly useful for series that involve factorials or exponential parts. It will not be as helpful, on the other hand, for series that closely resemble a p-series, right? Something that maybe we would have used the direct comparison test for in the past. Okay, but for the ratio test, be on the lookout for factorials and exponential parts. And so with that, let's take a look at our first example of using the ratio test. Okay, so here's our first example. We have this series, the sum from n equals one to infinity of four to the power of n divided by n factorial. Okay, so if we wanna use the ratio test for this series, we first need to identify what our sequence is, a sub n. And in this case, a sub n is equal to four to the power of n divided by n factorial, right? That is the sequence from our series. And then the other thing we need to identify is what will be a sub n plus one? What will that term of our series look like? Well, all we have to do to find that is replace n in a sub n with n plus one. So in this case, we will have four to the power of n plus one instead of four to the power of n. And in the denominator, we're going to replace this n with n plus one and that whole quantity is going to be affected by that factorial, so be sure to write it like this, n plus one factorial. If you don't write the parentheses, then the factorial would only be affecting the one, and we don't want that. We want the factorial to be affecting n plus one, that whole quantity, okay? And so now that we have a sub n and a sub n plus one, to use the ratio test, we are going to look at the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of a sub n plus one divided by a sub n, all right? And so we're going to have this term divided by this term. And so we're going to be dividing by a fraction. And so instead of writing out a very complex fraction of this term divided by this term, what we'll do instead is remember that dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal of that fraction. And so what we'll have is that this limit is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of a sub n plus one. So we'll have four to the power of n plus one divided by n plus one factorial, and then we're going to multiply that by the reciprocal of a sub n, and that will be the same as dividing by that term. So what we're going to do is flip the numerator and denominator, and so we'll multiply by n factorial divided by four to the power of n. All right, and so now this is the limit that we need to evaluate to determine if our series converges or diverges via the ratio test. All right, and so what we need to do in order to evaluate this limit is simplify it a little bit. And something that you're always going to want to do 
is split up any powers that you might have for any exponential parts. In this case, we have 4 to the power of n plus 1. What we should do is split that up, so this will be equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of 4 to the power of n times 4, right? 4 to the power of n times 4 to the first power would be the same as 4 to the power of n plus 1 because we would add those exponents when multiplying like bases, okay? So we split that up and then we will multiply by n factorial. And then in the denominator, what we're going to do is simplify this factorial of n plus 1 factorial. We're going to rewrite it in such a way that we will be able to cancel it out with the n factorial in the numerator. But how are we going to do that? Well, remember, if we have a factorial, let's say we have 4 factorial, that is equal to 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. But we could also write that as being equal to 4 times 3 factorial, right? 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1. And so this is an equivalent way to express 4 factorial, all right? We have the value of the factorial times the factorial of 1 less than that value. So if we have n plus 1 factorial, that would be equal to n plus 1 times n factorial, right? We have the value of that factorial times 1 less than that value factorial, right? n is 1 less than n plus 1, so we have n plus 1 times n factorial. And so we can rewrite n plus 1 factorial in our denominator here to be n plus 1 quantity times n factorial. And if we do that, we'll have n plus 1 times n factorial times this other part of the denominator, which is 4 to the power of n. And now we have an n factorial in the numerator and denominator that will cancel out, as well as 4 to the power of n in the numerator and denominator that cancels out as well. Okay, so whenever you have factorials in the numerator and denominator, typically you'll be able to remove that factorial by rewriting one of the expressions. All right, and so now all we are left with is the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of 4 divided by n plus 1. Right, all we're left with in the numerator is this 4, and in the denominator we just have this n plus 1. Now it's important to remember that our values of n are only going to be positive values from one to infinity. And so we don't need these absolute value bars anymore. This expression is always going to be positive. So I'm just gonna rewrite this. We will have four divided by n plus one. And what is going to happen to this expression as n approaches infinity? Well, we have four divided by n plus one. And so in this denominator, n is getting larger towards infinity. And so then we're adding one to it. And so this denominator is increasingly getting larger as n approaches infinity. And so we have a fixed value of four divided by an increasing denominator, which means that this limit will approach zero. Anytime you have a fixed value divided by infinity or an increasing value, that's going to be zero. And so this is equal to zero. All right, so the limit of the ratio a sub n plus one divided by a sub n is equal to zero, which is less than one, which means from the ratio test that our series converges absolutely. And so that is our final answer. We can say that our series converges absolutely. All right, that is the final answer for this example. When your limit of this ratio is less than one, this is the conclusion that you can make. Your series will converge absolutely. Let's look at another example. All right, so here's our second example. This time we have this series, the sum from n equals one to infinity of n times 10 ninths to the power of n. All right, now this looks very similar to a geometric series, but it's not a geometric series because of this n that's being multiplied by this part, all right? So we can't determine if this series converges or diverges using the geometric series test because this is not a geometric series. And so what we can do here is use the ratio test. And so we need to identify a sub n and a sub n plus one. a sub n is just going to be equal to the sequence from our series. So that will be n times 10 divided by nine or 10 ninths to the power of n. And then we need a sub n plus one. 
And so we're going to replace each of these n's in a sub n with n plus one. And so that will be equal to n plus one times 10 divided by nine to the power of n plus one. All right, so n is replaced with n plus one as a quantity, and this power of n is replaced with n plus one as well. All right, and so now let's look at the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of a sub n plus one divided by a sub n, all right? And so that will be equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of n plus one times 10 ninths to the power of n plus one, and that will be divided by n times 10 ninths to the power of n, all right? Now, if we simplify, we can split up this power for this exponential part. We could have 10 ninths to the power of n times 10 ninths to the first power, which is just going to be 10 ninths. And so this will be equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of n plus one times 10 ninths to the power of n times 10 ninths. And that will be divided by n times 10 ninths to the power of n. All right, and so now we have 10 ninths to the power of n in the numerator and denominator. And so those are going to cancel out. And what we're left with will be the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of n plus one times 10 ninths divided by n. All right, now at this point, once again, all values of n are going to be positive from one to infinity. And so this expression is always going to be positive. So we don't need these absolute value bars. And then to simplify further, we can pull this 10 ninths out to the front of the limit it's not going to be affected by the limit because we're looking at the value of n as it approaches infinity. And so 10 ninths is just a constant multiple that we can pull to the outside. It doesn't have any n's within it. And so I'm just going to rewrite this. We're just going to have n plus one in the numerator. And then out front, we will have 10 ninths times the limit as n approaches infinity of n plus one divided by n. All right, now when you have a limit as n approaches infinity of a rational expression like this, where the numerator and denominator are both algebraic, a quick way to evaluate that limit is to look at the highest power of n in the numerator and denominator. In this case, they're both equal, right? We have n to the first power and n to the first power. And when you see that, when those powers of n are equal, a quick trick for a limit as n approaches infinity is just to say that this will be equal to the ratio of the coefficients of those terms where n is raised to the highest power, right? So in this case, that will be one, the coefficient of this term, divided by one, the coefficient of this term. So this would be equal to 10 ninths times one divided by one, which is just one. So we have one times 10 ninths, and so this limit is equal to 10 ninths. All right, now 10 ninths, is greater than one, right? Because nine ninths would be one. And so 10 ninths is greater than one. And from the ratio test, we know that when this limit of the ratio of these two terms is greater than one, that our series diverges. All right, so because the limit was greater than one, we can conclude that our series diverges. All right, that is the final answer for this example. All right, so here's our next example. This time our series is the sum from n equals one to infinity of negative one to the power of n plus one times the quantity n plus two divided by n times the quantity n plus one. All right, and so the first thing we need to do if we're going to use the ratio test is identify a sub n and a sub n plus one. Now a sub n is just going to be equal to this expression. So we have negative one to the power of n plus one times n plus two divided by n times n plus one. All right, now a sub n plus one is going to be this expression, but we need to replace each n with n plus one. So there's a lot of n's here, so make sure you don't miss any of them. Let's start with our first one. We have n plus one as the power of negative one. So this will be equal to negative one to the power of n plus one plus one, right? We replace this n with n plus one, but n plus one plus one will just be n plus two. So I'm gonna rewrite this to be n plus two. 
then our quantity of n plus 2 is going to change to be n plus 1 plus 2, but 1 plus 2 is 3, so this is just going to be n plus 3. And then in the denominator, we have n times n plus 1, so we're going to have n plus 1 times n plus 1 plus 1. But once again, n plus 1 plus 1 is just going to be plus 2, so we have n plus 2. All right, so we replaced each of these n's with n plus 1, and so now this is our term a sub n plus 1. Okay, so now for the ratio test, we need to look at the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of a sub n plus 1 divided by a sub n. All right, and so that's going to be equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of this term divided by this term. All right, now similar to our first example, instead of writing out a very complicated fraction of this fraction divided by this fraction, let's instead multiply a sub n plus one by the reciprocal of a sub n, right? Dividing a value by a fraction is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal of that fraction. So we're going to have a sub n plus one, which is negative one to the power of n plus two times n plus three divided by n plus one times n plus two, and we're going to multiply that by the reciprocal of a sub n. That is the same as dividing by a sub n. All right, so we're going to flip the numerator and denominator. So we're going to multiply by n times n plus one divided by negative one to the power of n plus one times n plus two. All right, and so now we have our limit that we need to evaluate. Now there's a lot of different parts here to try to keep track of, but it's actually going to simplify pretty nicely. Note that we are taking the absolute value of this expression. And so this negative one to the power of n plus two and this negative one to the power of n plus one, those are just going to be eliminated from this expression entirely, right? Negative one to the power of n plus two or negative one to the power of n plus one can only be one of two values. It'll either be negative one or positive one. So if we take the absolute value of that, it's just going to make each of them always be positive one. So they don't even matter anymore. The absolute value bars are going to eliminate those from our expression, all right? And so that takes care of those two parts, but now let's see if there's anything else that cancels out. Note that we have n plus one in the numerator and n plus one in the denominator. So those are going to cancel out as well. And I believe at this point, that is all that is going to cancel out. So now if we rewrite our limit, this will be equal to the limit as n approaches infinity, and we don't need the absolute value bars anymore, we use those to get rid of these negative ones, and the rest of our terms are always going to be positive since n is always a positive value, all right? And we're not subtracting anything from those values, we are just adding three or adding two, all right? So we're going to have quantity n plus three times n divided by n plus two times n plus two. But we have two of those quantities, right? So we can just rewrite that to be n plus two squared. So I'm gonna do that here. We have n plus two squared. And now this is all we have left for our limit, okay? So now, if I clean up my work a little bit, let's try to evaluate this limit here. I think the best way to go about this is to simplify it. And so what I think we should do is multiply this n through this quantity and then expand this denominator. All right, so here's what we're going to have. We'll have the limit as n approaches infinity of n times n, which is n squared, so we have n squared, and then n times positive three, which is positive three n, so we have plus three n in the numerator. Now in the denominator, we have a quantity that we need to square, and so I'm going to use a little shortcut here to square this quantity. We first square the first term, so that will be n squared. Then the second term will be these two parts multiplied together, and then multiplied by two, so we have n times two, which is two n times two is four n. So we have plus four n as the middle term. And then our last term will be two squared. So we have two squared, which is four. Okay, and so now we have rewritten our limit a little bit. And now we can see that we have a rational function where the numerator and denominator are both algebraic expressions. And so what we can do is look at the highest power of n in the numerator and denominator and that should be able to tell us how to evaluate this limit as n approaches infinity. And so in this case, the highest power in the numerator and denominator 
is n squared, right? There is no higher power than n squared up top or in the bottom. And so the limit as n approaches infinity of this expression will be equal to the coefficients of those two terms, since the highest powers are equal. All right, so the coefficient in the numerator of n squared is one. So we'll have one divided by the coefficient of this n squared, which is also one. So this limit is equal to one divided by one, which is equal to one. And when your limit for the ratio test is equal to one, the ratio test is inconclusive. It doesn't tell us anything about our series. All right, so unfortunately, the ratio test didn't really work for this series. We are going to have to resort to a different test to know if this series converges or diverges. All right, so if you wanted to, you could write down that the ratio test is inconclusive. All right, but don't stop there. We still need to know whether this series converges or diverges. And so we're going to need to backtrack a little bit so I'm going to clean up my work here because now we need to use a different test. And so what other test for convergence that we know can we use for this series? Well, note that we have negative one to the power of n plus one in our numerator. Whenever you see negative one to the power of n or n plus one or n minus one, you know that your series is going to be an alternating series. That negative one to the power of n plus one is going to cause the terms of the series to alternate between being positive and negative. And so when you have an alternating series, you can test its convergence by using the alternating series test. And so that's what we're going to do here. And I shorten that with A, S, T. We're going to use the alternating series test for this series since the ratio test failed. All right, and so remember, for the alternating series test, in order to conclude that our series converges, we need to check two requirements. The first requirement is that the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n is equal to zero. Now remember, for the alternating series test, a sub n, our sequence, is going to be our sequence from our series, but without the part that makes it alternating. So we're going to be looking at the limit as n approaches infinity of n plus two divided by n times n plus one, all right? It's the exact same expression from our series, but we just remove the part that makes it alternating. And so what we wanna do is show that this limit is equal to zero. And if it is, then we can move on to our second requirement, which is to show that our sequence is decreasing. But we'll get there. Let's start by evaluating this limit. And so I'm going to start by multiplying n by this quantity in the denominator. This is going to be equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of n plus two divided by n times n, which is n squared, and then n times one, which is positive n, so we have plus n, okay? And so now we need to evaluate this limit. And so since we have a rational expression where we have algebraic terms in the numerator and denominator, we can determine the limit as n approaches infinity by looking at the highest powers of n. In this case, in the numerator, the highest power is one, and in the denominator, the highest power is two. So they're not equal, but the power in the numerator is less than the power in the denominator. And when that happens, the limit as n approaches infinity will be equal to zero. All right, now if you're not quite familiar with that rule for evaluating limits at infinity, I'll quick show you why that's true. We could multiply by a form of one, of one divided by the highest power of n found in the numerator or denominator. In this case, that would be n squared. So we would multiply by one divided by n squared divided by itself, and that would be equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of one divided by n plus two divided by n squared divided by one plus one divided by n, right? One divided by n squared times n will just be one divided by n. Two times one divided by n squared is two divided by n squared. And n squared times one divided by n squared is just positive one, since n squared is being divided by itself. And then one divided by n squared times n, once again, is one divided by n. All right, now the limit as n approaches infinity of one divided by n is zero. It's also zero for two divided by n squared because we have a fixed value divided by infinity or an increasing denominator. As n approaches infinity, this denominator is going to get increasingly larger 
And so this limit is just equal to zero plus zero divided by one plus zero. And so we have zero divided by one, which is equal to zero. All right, so that's where that comes from. But we can just take a little shortcut here and say that this limit is equal to zero. And so our first requirement for the alternating series test is met. All right, and so now we can check our second requirement, which is that our sequence is decreasing. And so we need to show that a sub n plus one is less than or equal to a sub n, right? The next term of the sequence needs to be less than or equal to the previous term in order for the sequence to be decreasing. And so if we compare those two terms, remember we're just looking at this sequence. It's the same sequence from our series, but without the alternating part. So a sub n plus one will be n plus three, right? This n plus two will be n plus one plus two, and one plus two is three. And that will be divided by n plus one, times n plus two, right? This n will become n plus one, and this n plus one will become n plus two, since we're adding another one, all right? And then we're going to compare that to a sub n, which is n plus two divided by n times n plus one, all right? And so now we want to show that a sub n plus one is less than or equal to a sub n. But now because the numerators and denominators are different, it's going to be best for us to look at a couple terms based on the value of n, and so if we look at the values when n equals one, we will have one plus three divided by one plus one times one plus two. And one plus three is four, so I'll rewrite that and we'll have four. One plus one is two times one plus two, which is three. So we have two times three, which is six. So we have four divided by six, which reduces to two thirds. So I'm just gonna rewrite that. Two thirds is the result for a sub n plus one, and then we're gonna compare that to a sub n, where we have one plus two divided by one times one plus one. Now one plus two is three divided by one times two, because one plus one is two, and so we have three divided by two to compare to two thirds. And so between two thirds and three halves, two thirds is definitely less than three halves, because three halves is greater than one, and two thirds is less than one. So when n equals one, a sub n plus one is less than a sub n. All right, now let's look at one more term. And as long as the sign doesn't flip, I think we're going to be good. It already looks like a sub n plus one is going to be less than a sub n for all values of n, because as n gets larger, this denominator is definitely going to get bigger faster than this denominator. But let's just look at our values when n equals two we're going to have two plus three divided by two plus one times two plus two. Now two plus three is five, so we have five in the numerator, so there's that. And then two plus one is three, and two plus two is four. Three times four is 12, so we have five twelfths. All right, so five twelfths, and we're gonna compare that to a sub n, which will be two plus two divided by two times two plus one. All right, we're just replacing n with two to get this expression. Now two plus two is four, so we have four in the numerator, so I'll write that. And then in the denominator, we have two times two plus one, which is three, so two times three is six. So we have four sixths, which once again reduces to two thirds. And so I'll rewrite this to be two thirds, and comparing five twelfths to two thirds, two thirds is the same as nine twelfths, and so five twelfths is definitely smaller. All right, and so from here on out, as we would look at more values of n, you would see that a sub n plus one is always going to be smaller than a sub n. And so we can conclude that a sub n plus one is less than or equal to a sub n. Our second requirement for the alternating series test is met. And so what that means is that this series is a convergent series, all right? And so we can say that our series converges and that is based on the alternating series test. All right, so even though the ratio test did not work, it failed, we were still able to show that our series converges by using a different test. And so remember that that is always something you can do. If the ratio test is inconclusive, don't stop, don't give up. Try to use another test to see if your series converges or diverges. Okay, let's look at one more example for this video. All right, so here's our last example. This time our series is the sum from n equals one to infinity of five to the power of n plus three times n squared divided by seven to the power of n. 
All right, now this is a fairly complicated sequence that we have for our series, right? We have a mixture of an algebraic expression of n squared, and then we have two exponential parts, five to the power of n plus three and seven to the power of n. And so this series is a good candidate for using the ratio test. And so if we wanna do that, we first need to write down a sub n. In this case, that will be equal to five to the power of n plus three times n squared divided by seven to the power of n. And then a sub n plus one will be equal to five to the power of n plus one plus three, but one plus three is four. So our power is just going to be n plus four. Then we have n squared, which will be n plus one squared, and that will be divided by seven to the power of n plus one. All right, so we replaced each of these n's with n plus one. Okay, and so now we need to look at the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of a sub n plus one divided by a sub n, all right? And so that is going to look like this. We will have the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of this expression divided by this expression. Now, once again, we have two rational expressions or two fractions, and so it's going to be easier for us to write them where we have the first one multiplied by the reciprocal of the second, right? Instead of writing out that huge fraction of a fraction divided by a fraction, just remember that dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. And so we'll have a sub n plus one, which is five to the power of n plus four times n plus one squared, divided by seven to the power of n plus one, and we'll multiply that by the reciprocal of a sub n. That is the fraction we are dividing by. And so we're going to flip the numerator and denominator. We'll have seven to the power of n divided by five to the power of n plus three times n squared. Okay, and so now we can start to simplify things. The first thing I'm going to do is split up all of our powers for the exponential parts. So we're gonna split up five to the power of n plus four to be five n times five to the fourth power. We're gonna split up seven to the power of n plus one to be seven to the power of n times seven to the first power. And we're going to split up five to the power of n plus three to be five to the power of n times five to the power of three. So if we do all of that, this will be equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of five n times five to the fourth times n plus one squared times seven to the power of n divided by seven to the power of n times seven times five to the power of n times five to the third power times n squared. All right, and so now you can see that we have some parts that are going to cancel. We have seven to the power of n in the numerator and denominator. We have five to the power of n in the numerator and denominator. And then we have five to the fourth power and five to the third power. We can reduce both of those by a power of three, right? So five to the third power is just going to become one and five to the fourth power will just become five to the first power, okay? Basically all that's happening here is we have five to the fourth divided by five to the third. And since we have like bases, you subtract the exponents. And so this would be equal to five to the first power because four minus three is one, all right? That's what we're doing to simplify those two parts, okay? And so now if we rewrite our limit, this is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity. And at this point, we don't need these absolute value bars anymore. All we are left with at this point is this five to the first power, n plus one squared, and then in the denominator seven and n squared. And so there's no way that that expression is ever going to be negative because our values of n are always positive. So we'll just have five times n plus one squared divided by seven times n squared. Okay, so now if I clean up my work a little bit, let's try to evaluate this limit by simplifying a little bit. I think we will want to expand this quantity, n plus one squared. So if we do that, this will be equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of five times this quantity squared. So we'll square the first term. So we'll have n squared plus the two terms multiplied together and then multiplied by two. So n times one is n times two is two n. So we have plus two n, and then we'll have our last term squared. So one squared is one, all right? And that is divided by seven n squared. Now, if we distribute this five through this quantity, we'll have five n squared plus 10 n plus five. So I'm just going to rewrite that here and distribute that five, and we'll have five n squared plus 10 n plus five. All right, 
And so now we have a rational expression where the numerator and denominator are algebraic. And so the limit as n approaches infinity can be determined by looking at the highest power of n in the numerator and denominator. In this case, we have n squared as the highest power in the numerator and n squared as the highest power in the denominator. And so since those highest powers are equal, this limit as n approaches infinity will be equal to the ratio of the coefficients for those two terms. So the coefficient of this n squared is five. So we'll have five divided by the coefficient of this n squared, which is seven. And so this limit is equal to five sevenths. And five sevenths is less than one, which means that from the ratio test, we can conclude that this series converges absolutely. Okay, and so our final conclusion is that our series converges absolutely. That is what we are able to conclude by using the ratio test for this series. Okay, and so with that, this was the last example for this video, but if you wanna see more examples of using the ratio test, feel free to check out my examples video that I'll have linked at the end of this video, as well as in the description below. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. But if you don't have any questions, this is all I had for now. So I will see you next time.